love that. I love that. Well, if you can, stay standing with me for just a second. I want to read to you what I just feel like is just, honestly, it's just kind of for this whole series that we're starting today. It's this series called Holy Spirit. Somebody shout, Holy Spirit. All right, right? I love that. I'm excited to talk to you and I about that today. But this is what the Bible says in John 14, verse 15. It says this. This is Jesus talking. So I want us to understand what he's saying to us. He says this. If you love me, obey my commandments. And what I will do, Jesus says, is I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Another word for that is helper. Somebody shout, helper. Helper, right? He will, he will give you another advocate, a helper who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And I can't wait over the next few weeks to talk to us a little bit about what we're talking about over the next few weeks of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? What, is, what does He want to do and how does that affect your, yours and my life? All right, so we're going to talk about that today, but I want to tell you the title of today's message first. And it's this idea, we're going to wrap our minds around who the Holy Spirit is this Mother's Day together. And I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, the title of today's message is, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. So let me pray one more time. Jesus, thank you so much for today. We honor you. We lift you up. Thank you for your word. I pray that you would speak to us today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody in this room said, everybody in this room said, all right, as you're having a seat, if you love Jesus, can you make a little bit of noise in this place for Jesus? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, I want to welcome everybody that's in, watching it online. Man, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for hanging out with us. And I'll just tell you again, it's always better, and I just think it's always better to be in the room. Come on, somebody. It's better being in the room probably than watching online. And I'll just tell you, if you uh, are, are doing that for health reasons, man, we want to honor that. But if it's out of habit, let me just talk to you real quick. Come on back. We would love to have you uh, again today. I'm so thankful for all of our mamas in the room. So glad that you're here. So thankful that we get a chance to spend some time with you. I know you've been, probably been cooking, worrying about everybody else on your day. But for a few minutes, I want all you mamas just to sit back and relax. And man, we want to honor you and just take care of you. And again, on the way out, grab a macaroon, grab something, a little, a little, a little tea, a little lemonade, one of those buttons that say you're a hot mama. Some of y'all need to know you're a hot mama today, okay? Uh, I want to honor my little mama right there. So thankful for Allie uh, and just the matriarch of Purpose Church. Church, right? She's the mama of Purpose Church, and she does a great job loving our babies and loving our household. And so I honor you today, mama. I really haven't even seen you this morning uh, for a little while, but I'm so glad that I get a chance just to just to do life alongside of you. Can we give it up for Allie real quick, everybody in the place? She going to tell me not to do that next service, but I'm going to anyway. So uh, I'll just tell you guys, how many of y'all have a, uh, let me ask a question. How many of y'all have one of those recipes that your mama, if she cooks it, like you want that recipe? Come on, somebody. Anybody out there, grandmama? I, I think about recipes, and I think about a lot of, uh, of the moms in the room and grandmamas, and I think, oh my goodness, there are some things I love to eat, right? There's just some things that I think are so special. Uh, in our family, one of those is Allie's great-grandmama. She's got like this dressing uh, at Thanksgiving recipe. It's like in a lockbox. You, you can get into Fort Knox easier than you get into this uh, recipe that, that Mamie had. Uh, and Mamie had passed away, but I'll just tell you, uh, that recipe still lives on in our family. I think about my grandma, on my grandmama's side, like uh, uh, on my mom's side, she makes a mean strawberry cake. Come on, somebody, right? I'll just tell you, man, just a mean, and I feel like I'm almost cheating on her if I am uh, eating somebody else's strawberry cake. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, that's the kind of good this strawberry cake is. And I think about recipes a lot of times. Uh, I think about all the ingredients that goes into recipes. And as I started to think about that, I started to look up a few things this week that, uh, uh, like, I don't know about you, but we've tried to make the strawberry cake before. We We've tried to make the dressing before, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Just doesn't hit right. You know what I'm saying? Like, just doesn't quite get where you thought it was going to be. And there's like this expectation, oh, I'm going to follow the recipe. I don't know what it is, but grandmamas and mamas put that special love up in the middle of that recipe. Uh, and, and there's the expectation and there's reality of what happens, right? So that's, I think that happens in life. I wanted to just show us a little bit of expectation versus reality of some people that have some recipes that I don't know that they followed the recipe just right. And I thought we'd start out today with a little bit of laugh. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Everybody good with that? Yeah, okay, let's laugh a little bit. So here we go. This is the expectation a lot of times, like we want to do that. Come on, this is reality, all right? Let's be real. 
Like, this is what I could do. I couldn't even do that good. Y'all wouldn't even be laughing at it. Like, that is expectation versus reality. Come on, somebody, right? Let's go to the next one. I think about it. All right, then. Uh, so you got expectation with a number one right there. That's, that's Elmo. And uh, here's Elmo. I don't even know if that can even be considered Elmo on the reality side, right? Uh, I think that's a little, wow, that, that, it's runny. You know what I'm saying? It's just runny. I don't know what's happening. All right, the next picture. I, I, I love that. Come on, some Olaf fans, right? He's been out in the sun a little too long and maybe got ran over by the car uh, on the reality side, right? So, so again, man, the ingredients, man, just follow the recipe. Just do the things that the ingredients tell, or the recipe tells you to do, and it'll turn out. Just, I'll just tell you, sometimes it don't turn out quite like that, right? The last one, I think we got one more for you, is like we, we expect it to be like this, and this is the reality. It even has up there, kill me, right? Now, that's what it says on that, on that little thing right there. So take that down while we don't get distracted for a few minutes. But I, I think about uh, that, that idea. Uh, I think the ingredient that a lot of them were missing may have been talent. Come on, somebody right? Might have been a little talent or just add some more butter. Come on, mamas. Y'all know what it is. Just throw some more butter on it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nobody like that because I like butter on everything. Come on. Like we put butter in anything. But I, I, I think if we look at those things and you, you pay attention to those things that are up there, uh, that we say the expectation versus reality, that there are ingredients that you and I, if we would follow, if we would go along the recipe, that there, it, we would be successful in that. And I think about that. And I think about in our life, in mine and your life, what happens so many times is that you and I are walking around knowing what the ingredients are to be able to have a successful life, knowing what uh, the ingredients are to be able to have a life that lives a, a, a purposeful life. But what happens is, is that we're not tapping in to one of the main ingredients for you and I to live a powerful, spirit-filled life, and that's the Holy Spirit. And I just think there's so many of us that are walking around today not tapping into this ingredient of what we really do believe that life can be like if you and I follow Jesus. Now think about this. There was a guy in the Bible that just had it, right? He just had this thing about him, and his name is Paul, okay? So Paul is a guy that I love in the Bible, love reading about Paul, love hearing the stories that he had and, and literally the things that he went through. And so we find in Philippians that he is writing this, uh, this book to the church at Philippi, and he's letting them know something about how they can get through anything that's going on in their life. And, and he tells a little bit of a secret, and we'll walk through that in just a second. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you that, that today, I, I, I just, I'm so thankful for some teachers that I've had even in my own life, uh, people I've learned from along the way as far as what I'm able to bring you. And so today, I kind of got a conglomerate of a few things that I've learned along the way. One from Pastor Mike Todd, he just showed, uh, uh, we've had this on the schedule for the Holy Spirit series for a while, and man, he had an illustration I'm going to show you in just a little bit, and some points that I think were so valuable. Also, Pastor Chris Hodges, man, these guys could preach it a lot better than I can, but I want to just bring it to you because I feel like that's what our church needs right now, and I want to acknowledge that, I want to honor that, and I just think that there's some some of us that we're again we're walking around without the special ingredient that I believe that God wants to give us and wants us to walk in and again this guy named Paul he had it he got it and so I want you to know that in Philippians chapter 4 what we find ourselves reading uh, is the fact that Paul is writing this and you got to understand where he's writing it from it helps to have some context when it comes to scripture right it helps to understand kind of a little bit of the backstory of that and so I want to give that to you because Philippians chapter 4 is going to be great but I want you to understand that Paul is writing this from inside of prison all right you got to understand that Paul is writing this letter he's not done something bad okay like he ain't a bad dude he has been preaching the name of Jesus and because he has done that they put him in a thing called Mamertine prison which I want you to know what Mamertine prison is. It ain't like just a county jail, okay? Like this is underneath the bottom of the, the middle of the city where all of the sewage would run, where it was completely dark. Uh, the only kind of light that you would have would be by candle or, or flame or torch or whatever. And what we see happening right there is that Paul is in this place for preaching Jesus, and he's writing the book of Philippians, right? He's writing this to the church to encourage them a little bit. So I think, hey, you know what? What we're going through, not near as bad as that sometimes, right? You know what I'm saying? And I think about what Paul is writing, what he's saying to you and I, and I want to throw this out there to us. Just to start this entire series off with this idea of who the Holy Spirit is, we see Paul talk a little bit about a secret that I want you to know that can help you and I in all of our life. This is what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. 
I love it. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Come on, I think we all can be there, right? We've all been there at one time or another. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Well, Paul, you don't know what I'm going through, right? Just remember where he's writing this from. Remember where he's coming at us with this from, right? The secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. And I just think about the life of Paul and, and just literally the, the idea that he cannot go through some things that he went through in his life and not be living according to the Holy Spirit in his life. And so I think about that. And they say that many theologians believe that like what they would have to do is they would have to change out the guard every single hour every time they came in every hour would change the guard because if they spent any more time down there with Paul that they would be converted to Christianity in an hour right because he was so full of joy he was so filled with the spirit of God he was so filled with it don't matter what the circumstances around me guess what let me tell you about Jesus right let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in my life so they had to change the guard out every hour and what that would just encourage me what that challenged me with is that Paul understood that I may be going through something hard but it's not going to take away my hope right that I may be going through something that is a long journey and I've been on this road for a really long time but it is not going to take away my joy my joy is not a derivative of what I'm going through my joy is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of me is there anybody that's thankful that no matter what goes on in your life that you and I have the opportunity to say you know what it may be hard but I've got joy 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 down deep in my heart come on let's give it up for King Jesus in this place I just want us to understand the value of what we're going to talk about over the next few weeks and how it can change our life so so again how do I how do I do this consistently right how do I go about my life living a life that's consistently filled with joy? doesn't mean that the circumstances are always going to be good because obviously they're not. Paul is writing this to us in a prison. But how do I do that consistently? I think about what Scripture has to tell us in 2 Corinthians. And it says, and as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, that's a big thing right there, we become more and more like Him. Right, we become more and more like him. I think about what the world will tell you and I, and the world will tell us how you be you, you do your thing, be yourself. And what happens is, I'm not mad about that. I, I think that's okay. But, but again, I, I think you ought to be like yourself. You're not to compare yourself to somebody else that's out there. But the challenge of us, uh, for us, of those that are believers and believe in Jesus is so much, and so many times we look too much like ourselves and not enough like God, right? We look too much like the world and there is no difference between us and the world. And if we want to make a difference, we've got to live differently. Like I want you, I'm going to say it again. If we want to make a difference, we have to live differently than the world is living. So how do we do that consistently? It's right there in that verse that the Spirit of the Lord works within me. Everybody say, Spirit of the Lord. Spirit. Come on, say it with a little bit of umph. Say, Spirit of the Lord. I like it. All right, and now here's again. I want you to understand that when we start talking about the Holy Spirit, I think a lot of us have different backgrounds. We've got different uh, uh, raisings and upbringings. Some of y'all, uh, I don't know if you've been around church, maybe you've been around church for a long time. Back in the day, like, like growing up, they call that the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's got like 48 syllables instead of the Holy Spirit. I think when we start talking about this idea of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, right? Like people start getting wigged out, start figuring out, okay, what's going on? What do I do? It freaks us out. But as a pastor, I deal with this question a lot, and I want you to understand that God wants to answer our questions for us. God wants to, not for us to be a, a confused generation, not for us to be confused about the Holy Spirit, but I think a lot of times what happens is, is we just don't know. We just don't know enough about it. We, we go based off not necessarily what the Bible would say, but what we've been taught. And I think a lot of times what happens is it comes from experience when we talk about the Holy Spirit. And I love that Purpose Church is a church that has all different backgrounds, right? I love that you could come in this room right here and whether you were at church your whole life, whatever kind of church it was, or whether you've never been to church in your life, I love that we can come together and we can lift up the name of Jesus, that we can sing about Jesus, that we can talk about 
him and we can do all of those things. I love that. But I think so many times we've kind of got different backgrounds and different filters that we see God through. And what happens is, is sometimes uh, you may have grown up in, in, a, in a church that, didn't ne- that never talked about the Holy Spirit. And said, stay away from people to talk about the Spirit. They're going to start barking at you or something. You know, like, like that, that's one side of it. Or maybe on the other end of the extreme, like literally you may have been raised in a church that all you spoke about was the Holy Spirit. And if you didn't have the manifestation of the Holy Ghost or the Spirit, like, like then you're, you're not saved. Even that, That's even like on one end of the extreme. And so we bring all of this together. And we all come underneath one roof in, in Callaway County Middle School together as Purpose Church. And what I love about this is that we have a chance just to look back today at what Scripture has to tell us. And we're just going to do some theology one-on-one. Everybody okay with that? Everybody good? Everybody just strap up your, your boots because we're going deep today. Everybody okay with that? On Mother's Day, mamas, y'all are awesome, and I'm so glad you're here. And we're just going to go deep because I think about the Sunday school teachers back in the day was a lot of mamas out there, right? A lot of ladies that taught us things, and, man, I'm so grateful for them. So we're just going to kind of throw it back to theology one-on-one and who is the Holy Spirit. Let's just look at what the Bible has to tell us about who the Holy Spirit is. So what I want you to write down is that the Holy Spirit is not just a power, it's not just a presence, but the thing I want you to write down is that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. So I want you to understand that Dustin McLean is a person, right? I'm a person, you are a person. Think about it. Like the thing about that is, is like a lot of you, maybe you mamas out there, you are a, you are a person, right? You, you, maybe your significant other, obviously, they are a person like Allie. I fell in love with Allie, the person of Allie, who she is, what she's like. I, I, I love her so much. Like, like you don't fall in love with a tree. You know what I'm saying? You know, come on, this means yes in Kentucky. And if you do, we got some problems that we need to work through, okay? Like, it's beautiful, but you're not in love with the tree. You, you, I'm in love with Allie, the person of Allie, because she has qualities and characteristics and things about her that I love. And what I want us to understand is that the Holy Spirit is a person. And so many times in uh, uh, growing up, and a lot of times what happened is, is that we referred to the Holy Spirit as an it. But that's not the case. The Holy Spirit is a person. Why is that important? Why is that important for us just to start there? You know why? It's because you and I will never develop a personal relationship with somebody that you don't see as a person. You'll never develop a personal relationship with somebody that you don't see as a person. And the Holy Spirit wants to have an incredible, intimate friendship with you. So so we we, we see Jesus in the very beginning as we read today in John 14. What's Jesus doing in John chapter 14? He's telling them, hey, you guys, I want you to know something. I am salvation. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. That's John 14, 6. And then he gets on to where we talked about it in verse 15. Hey, if you love me, obey my commands. And then guess what I'm going to do? The Father is allowing me, providing me to send you an advocate, a helper that's going to come, and he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never going to do any of that, right? And we see that word, Holy Spirit, a helper. I wish a lot of times that the Holy Spirit, kind of like Jesus has a name, like the Holy Spirit had a name. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe it would be Jeff. You know, like that'd be awesome if the Holy Spirit's name was like Jeff. You know what I'm saying? Because then we could really begin to personify the person of the Holy Spirit. We could begin to bit behind that. But what I say, since we say Holy Spirit, it's kind of got this ooh, this ooh-wee vibe behind it. Like, ooh, what is that? And so many people think it's this mystical thing. But I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person. Like the Holy Spirit is a person. And if you and I would realize that the Holy Spirit is a person, we would develop a personal friendship with Him. But again, I think the problem for so long is that we've been taught wrong, or we haven't been taught about it, right? We haven't even talked about it. It's something we don't necessarily even talk about. And so hopefully over the next few weeks, we're going to have the opportunity to teach about who, what, and how of the Holy Spirit. And so today we're tackling the who. And so again, we're going Theology 101. Can we, can we handle that today? We're going to go back to a little college, a little seminary together. Okay, I never went. I'm, I really feel like the Lord is telling me to go. Uh, but, but I've never been, but we're going to go through it together today, all right? So Theology 101. I want us to understand that as we've talked about it, as we even uh, have grown up in church, we all know that God the Father, that there's Him, there's God the Son, and there's God the Holy Spirit, right? 
And we say that. We say those things. We say, God, you know, three gods in one, right? Three expressions of God in one God. And we say those things, but what about it is that we don't live like that's the case. We don't speak about it in the church like that's the case. And, and I'm going to step on a few toes really quick. Can I, can I do that? Everybody okay? Can I step on some toes? I'm just going to challenge your thinking right now. I want you to understand that we serve a God that is three gods in one. I don't want you to know something, that God the Father is not more powerful than God the Holy Spirit. God the Son is not more powerful than the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. I want us to get that. I know all of us, we have those things like, wait, 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 let me think about that. Oh, if we really believe in the Trinity that God is three gods in one, that is the truth, is that God the Holy Spirit is, the, is, is just as powerful as God the Son, but he's got a different function. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, okay, together. I, th I think a lot of us, as we're taught as kids, as we teach our own kids, it's easier for us to teach them about David because he's a person than it is to teach them about the Holy Spirit, right? It's hard for us to do that. It's hard. It's a challenge. But we, again, we've got to understand as we think about that, as we think about theology, it's one God three expressions. So I want you to write this down. So not only is the Holy Spirit a person, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is God, right? You wrote it down as the title of today's message, but I want to get this across to you. I want us to understand this. See, this is all throughout Scripture that we see the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit mentioned together or even residing in the same place at the same time. I love what we see. Even You think about the very beginning of of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. What do we find out in Genesis chapter 1? That God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit had a little board meeting and they had to say, you know what? Oh, okay. This is what Genesis 1 26 says. It says, hey, let us make man in our image. Right? Well, so we got to understand that there's a board meeting going on between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they say, hey, let us make man, human being, in our image to be like us. Y'all know that us is plural, right? Y'all know that, 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 that. Our is plural. It's not just singular. I want you to see that. I want you to understand that that's happening. Look at John chapter 15. This is Jesus speaking. And what does Jesus tell us? He says this. I will send you the advocate or the helper, the spirit of truth. And he will come to you from the Father and will testify about me. So right there we see the Trinity happening in the middle of Scripture. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We see that going on. Look at Luke chapter 3 verse 22. I love this. This is right after the, the baptism of Jesus in water. He comes up out of the water, and we see in Luke chapter 3, verse 22, and it says, In the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on, shout it. Somebody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah, in bodily form, descended on him, being Jesus, like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, this is God the Father speaking, You are my dearly loved Son. And you bring me great joy. And then we all know the, the great commission, right? That, that God, uh, Jesus, as he's about to ascend to heaven, what does he say? He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son. Help me out. The Holy Spirit, right? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I've always heard this talked about before, but I never really understood it a whole lot. So I thought, uh, again, Pastor Mike did a great I illustration. I'm going to take that illustration. I'm going to show you guys something of how we want to talk about uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I want everybody to just follow along with me really quick. So right here we got three different jars, right? We see that? So this first little jar right here, I don't know if y'all can see that. Y'all see what's inside? What is this right here? Water. I, I, okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's water, but think about it. If we take it down... Pastor Mike did this. I'm going to do it too. Oh, that's good. That's H2O. That's high quality H2O. For all you Waterboy fans out there, don't want, do not watch that movie. Um, so we got H2O. If we take it down to its basic form right now, this right here is H2O, correct? This means yes in Kentucky. Come on. All right, good. Everybody good with that? This is H2O. I want us to see that. That's H2O. What do we got here in this middle thing? Can you see it? What is it? Okay, how, but, but first, if you take it down to its basic form, what is it? H2O, right? Okay, well, y'all follow me right now. I want you to see something. So we got water, H2O in liquid form. We got a different expression of water, but guess what? Still the same makeup, H2O, right? But instead, what I want you to see is that instead of when your drink gets hot, you know what you and I do? We don't go and put more water in it, do we? 
Now what we do, we put ice in it because it's a different expression of H2O. I want you to see that. Everybody good? Everybody following? This means yes in Kentucky. Come on, somebody. All right, so we got, we got water, H2O, liquid form. We got ice, H2O, a frozen form, different expression, same makeup. Got that? And in this one right here, we've got uh, dry ice, okay? This is what this is in this uh, compartment right here. Okay, so what I want you to understand is anybody know what the makeup of dry ice is? H2O, okay? I want you to understand if you take it down to its most basic form, dry ice is considered H2O. What I want you to see, boy, we're about to have some church up in here, is the fact that, oh, we like we in the science fair or something like that. You know what I'm saying? What I want you to understand right now is that this right here, and what I want you to see, is H2O, but in dry ice form. This right here is ice, but it's still H2O. This right here is water, and it's H2O. It's just three different expressions of H2O. Are you following me really quickly? Because this is what the Bible, how I can make it as plain and simple for you and I, in my mind, my ADHD self, is that this is God the Father, this is God the Son, and this is God the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The same form, the basic same, uh, just makeup, obviously, but three different expressions that, that uh, ba back to the basic form, right? You got God the Father, you got God the Son, and you got smoking God the Spirit. Come on, somebody, right? Fresh wind is blowing right now off this stage. You know what I'm saying? I want you to understand that this is the easiest way that I can explain to you and I that this is how God, and, and I don't know if we're, we're created to understand everything about God, because this is what I know is that if God were too small to be understood, he wouldn't be big enough to be worshipped. And I think about that so much, and this is how my finite mind can put this in front of us, that we serve a triune God, yes, a big word, but three gods in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense to anybody in the room? That help us out a little bit? Okay, so I want us to understand that. I kind of wanted to, us to see that, that G the Holy Spirit is God. You and I need to recognize that. We need to know that. And again, I'm about to take you through a little bit of theology. We're going to walk through what God the Father, what his function is, what the status of God the Father is. We're going to walk through the, the status and the function of God the, the Son and Jesus and God the Holy Spirit. Are you all ready? Yeah. Say, I'm ready. All right, here we go. I want you to draw this chart on your take note sheet, on your, on your note taker sheet. I want to just walk us through some of this together. It's a little different than what I'm used to, a little different than how I usually preach to you, but I just felt like this was the thing that we need to start this series off with, understanding who the Holy Spirit is. All right, so we're going to walk through this together. I want you to start out by making this right here. Go ahead and throw up the next screen, if you don't mind. So we've got the name, we've got the title, we've got the function, and we've got the status and the location. So if y'all don't mind writing that down, that would be awesome. Go ahead and hit that next slide if you don't mind. So we've got God, 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 right? We've got three gods in one. Three, God is it's three persons in one, okay? So I want to just walk through these together as we're talking through this. So we've got God, the Father. All right, go ahead and write this down. Are we going too fast, class? Are we going too quick together? All right, I'll slow down just a little bit. So we've got God, the Father. I want you to write that down. All right, that's the title. All right, we we see that all through Scripture. We see God is God the Father. Not only is He God the Father, but guess what He is? He's God the Son or Jesus. I want you to see that right there. I want you to understand that. So fill that in right there. And then we got God, the, come on, help me out, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, right? We've got God, the Holy Spirit. So I want you to write this down. I want you to take these notes down. We're going to walk through what they are. So we've got the title being God the Father. We've got God the Son or Jesus. Right, and we got God, the Holy Spirit. Now, I think what we have to do is start to begin to understand what the function of each of these different uh, forms of the Godhead, what they do. What, what is it that God the Father does? What is the function that God the Father does? Let me share it with you. Once you write it down, is that he is the provider. God the Father is the provider, right? What he do, he provided the heavens and the earth. Uh, he, he provided my one and only son, right? That's what God the Father did. He provided Jesus as a sacrifice. He, provide pl he provides plans for everybody, purpose for everybody. And then what do we see in the Bible? The Bible tells us that God the Father takes a seat on the throne and that earth is his footstool, right? We see that that kind of takes place and that happens, all right? So I want us to see that, that God the Father is the provider. Somebody say provider. 
Love that song that just came out that he's Jaira, right, from, from Elevation Worship. Man, he is Jaira. He is enough. He has provided enough. That's the God that we serve. I'm so grateful for that. So God the Father is a provider, all right? I want to see what the next thing is. I want you to write this down. Is that God the Son or God Jesus is what? He's a Savior. I want you to see that he's a Savior, the function, the thing that he did, what, what his job, his role was, was to be the Savior. See, God the Father, he didn't necessarily come to save you. You know why? He sent his son Jesus to come and save you. That's what happened. He provided his son Jesus. He sent Jesus, God the Son, to save you. And when you and I, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus and the finished work of what he did on the cross of Christ, the burial, death, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, guess what? You and I, we don't have to keep getting saved. No, no, no. Jesus is a Savior. Like, you don't have to continue to ask every single week, hey, Lord, would you save me? No, if you mean it in your heart, if you really ask Jesus to come into your life, Life, guess what? He is a savior and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. So what I want us to see is that Jesus' role, his function, who he is, is savior. That's what he did. That's what he does. It's a done deal when you say yes to Jesus. That your past, your past, your present, and your future has all been forgiven. That's good news for some of us in this room, ain't it? It's great news for us that Jesus is our savior. And I think about that, that so many of us walk through this life right now, and we know where we're going, and we know where we're going to spend eternity, but we don't even know how we're going to get through tomorrow. Right, so, so what I want to challenge us with, what I want to encourage us with is that God, not only did he provide his, God the Father, not only did he provide the earth and, and, and everything in it and purpose and plans and provide his son to be a sacrifice, a, a savior for you and I, but I love that God is a provider enough to say, hey, I'm going to provide the Holy Spirit whose function is our helper. Advocate, helper, that's what we kind of read in the very beginning of today in John uh, chapter 14. He is our advocate. He is our helper, right? It's always good to know who to go to when you need some help, right? It's always good to know who to go to. I think about uh, all you mamas out there that have turned into homeschool teachers this year, right? Like you've had to take your kiddos and you've had to walk them through some school. And Allie can attest to this in our family. Uh, if Conley needs some help with some of her schoolwork, Lord knows she don't need to come to me. Come on, somebody, right? Uh, I, I'll just tell you guys, the ADHD in me, I don't have the patience. Me and Conley act a whole lot alike, all right? And so if you put us in the room together, we're bouncing off the walls. We want to go outside. Like we see a squirrel and we're like, okay, let's go. You know, like, like I, that's how it is. But if she's not doing what I'm asking her to do, I, like, I just can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? I just can't handle it in our house. And so Allie is the person that, that I always, it's funny because Conley will come into the room and be like, Mama, can you help me with this? And I'm like, baby, why don't you ask me? And she's just like, because she knows, and, and it's, I, I, try to, I try to do whatever I can to help her. I, I read to her as much as I can to do all that. But if she needs some real help in our, life, in our, in our house, like when it comes to schoolwork or, or anything else, she's going to go to mama, right? All you mamas out there, you really recognize that. It's something that those babies do with you. And, and I just think about that. Conley knows who to go to when she needs help. You know what I think about? How many of us need help in everyday life, walking through our life? I think we all do. There's an area in all of our lives that we need help in. And you know what I think about? The Holy Spirit has been provided to us to be our helper, to be our God, to be our comforter. That's the thing that He is there to do. And is there any area of your life that you need help? Guess what? Ask the Holy Spirit. I need help in my marriage. Ask the Holy Spirit. I need help raising my kids ask the Holy Spirit you need help with that business deal and which one to take or which one to say no to ask the Holy Spirit you need to be out of that relationship or you've been praying hey should I stay in this relationship but that relationship is toxic and it's deadly to you and it's like poison in your life and you've been dating him for so many years and he's never asked you to marry him he's not worried about committing to you he's not wanting to do any of that guess what first of all I don't even know if you got to ask the Holy Spirit break up with him but ask the Holy Spirit Right? Ask the Holy Spirit. If you need to know what God's will is for our life, guess what? Ask the Holy Spirit. You need to understand or, or you want to know what you need to study while you're attending Murray State University or whether to take this job or that job, ask the Holy Spirit. And you know what the Holy Spirit's job is? Is to lead you and I in all truth. 
right, is to lead us into truth. And you know who the truth is? Jesus said it even a few verses back, and we didn't read it, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what I want you to understand is that the Holy Spirit's job is to lead us to Jesus, is to lead us to furthering that relationship with God, with God the Son. And the Holy Spirit's job, the function of the Holy Spirit, is to be our helper. Everybody okay? Everybody good? Everybody alive? Come on, this means yes in Kentucky. I can't see half of you in the room, but I know you're there. All right, good. So I want us to understand this. I'm trying to walk through this through you. Theology one-on-one together. And if we're okay, we're going to keep going together. The next, the next thing is the status. So what I want to see, and I think this is, going to, this is going to be the part that challenges a lot of us. It's going to be the part that challenges us, and I'll, I'll talk about it in just a second. But what I want you to see is that the status of God, the Father who provided is this. The status is that He's holy. The status is that he's set apart. The status is, is that the Bible tells us in Matthew 5, 48, it says, Be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You know what? God, God the Father couldn't be around sin. Right? God the Father couldn't be around sin. So what did he do? He provided a Savior to come and save us from our sin. To forgive us of all unrighteousness. And I, I think about that, that God, the Father, the Holy Father couldn't be in the room with sin. Like I think about that and I think about a lot of us growing up. I had asthma as a kid. Uh, I somehow outgrew that. But I remember being at St. Jude and they had like this smoking room that was there uh, for people that had to smoke. Now listen, if you smoke, that's okay. That ain't going to send you to hell. Just smell like you done been there. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it is. But... but I'm just kidding. I love everybody. I don't care. I, I love all of y'all. I want you to understand that, like, when I was a kid, I could be in that room, and I could really, like, uh, I could tell that I was in a smoke-infested room, and I, I would start to gasp a little bit. I had asthma. I had a little stuff going on while I had leukemia and just some things like that. So I had to just really watch what rooms I walked into when I was a little kid, and I just think about that in the fact that God is so set apart. He's so holy that he technically couldn't be in the presence of sin. And what happened is, is he provided a Savior, right, in Jesus to come and die for our sins. Now, what I want you to understand is that God the Son, right, so we've got God the Father, He's holy, set apart. God the Son, guess what He's doing? He's sitting down. God the Son is sitting down. I, I think about it, His assignment was to come to earth, and it was to live a perfect life. It was to become the Savior of the entire world. This thing might explode up here. It's going to be awesome if it does. But that was His job. Was, to, was to, to save us, to save us from sin. He completed the mission. He completed the assignment. And then when he died, when he was buried and he resurrected, guess what he did? The Bible tells us is that he ascended to heaven. And guess what he did? He plopped a seat down in the lazy boy right next to God the Father. Now he's seated right beside the Father. So what I want you to understand is that God the Son is seated right now. So this is the part I want to challenge us with. It's the part I think a lot of us, we may not even have thought of it this way, but what I want you to understand is that God, the Holy Spirit, the status of Him is active. The status of the Holy Spirit is active. And this is the thing that's going to challenge us. The only expression of God, let me challenge you really quick, the only expression of God that is active today on the earth is God, the Holy Spirit. And I know that's kind of rocking our world right now, right? That's kind of rock, like what is going on right now? I want you to understand that the only expression of God that is active today on earth is God the Holy Spirit. And the reason that it's important to acknowledge the person of the Holy Spirit is because He is the only expression of God that is active in every day, every breath, every moment, every decision, everything that you and I do for the rest of our life. And guess what? The Bible tells us He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And He's going to escort you and I to heaven to where Jesus is seated. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, man, God the Father, Jesus, and, and God the Father and Jesus are right there. And man, we're going to be able to have communion with you. It's going to be great. But I want us to get this in our spirit is that the Holy Spirit is God. 
We've got to get that. And we could, uh, I, the problem and the reason why I want to spend so much time on this, just talking to us about this, is that there's so many churches across the country. And man, we are going to be on the team of everybody that can preach Jesus, uh, buried, death buried and resurrected. But there's so many people that will never acknowledge the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person. And I believe they're missing out on an ingredient to live a life that is an incredible calling. And I just think that's so challenging to us. We got to see this. We got to just go back, just kind of go back to the roots of what it is. Now, the last thing I want you to write down uh, on this chart is the location. So, we talked about it. God the Father is the provider, and He's holy, and He's in heaven, right? We see God the Son, Jesus, Savior, he saved the world, saved you and I from our sin. He's seated beside the Father in heaven, right? Watch this. We talked about it just a second ago. God the Holy Spirit, the advocate or the helper, is active. And he's on earth. Now I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. These are kind of, the, if, you, if you just kind of walk down through there, these be kind of come, uh, become the, the title, not the titles, but really the points of what I wanted you to get out of that right there. Is that God the Father provides for me and is holy in heaven. I want us to see that. Matthew 6, 9 says, pray like this. When Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray, What's he say? Our Father, and we're going to go King James Version, who art in heaven, right? Our Father who's in heaven, may your name be kept holy. I think we got to see that. we got to understand that God the Father provides for me and is holy in heaven. Watch this. God the Son, just kind of go down that chart. God the Son saves me and is now seated in heaven. Look at Luke 22, verse 69. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. Seated in heaven. And watch the last one. God the Holy Spirit. And if Kyle could come up here, that would be awesome. God the Holy Spirit helps me and is active right now on earth. Right? What did Jesus say? In fact, it's best for you. This is what Jesus said in John 16, 7. It's best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate, the helper won't come. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. I think a lot of us, we like to say, man, if I just lived in the time of Jesus, if I just lived in the time of, of, of God the Son, Jesus, like if we could just do that, and, and, and Jesus would say, hey, oh, no, 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 I want you to understand something. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's going to be better for you if I leave. One reason, let me just kind of instruct us a little bit about that, is if Jesus were here today, he could be at one geographical location at one time in the flesh. Right In the flesh, he could be at one place at one time. So if you wanted to go see Jesus, if I wanted to go see Jesus, we'd have to travel to the place where Jesus was. We'd have to gather around him. We'd try to fight through all the crowds just to be able to see Jesus. But guess what? We do not have to do that anymore. You know why? Because Jesus sent us the helper, the Holy Spirit, and he resides in every believer. And the Holy Spirit is all over the world. And if your neighbor needs prayer, guess what? You can start praying and the Holy Spirit is there. If healing needs to take place on the other side of the world, I'm just praying that, that the Spirit of God, obviously he's going to be there and that that person on the other side of the world is going to be healed at the same time that prayer is happening on this side of the world world, that, that the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And what I want us to understand, and Francis Chan wrote a book called The Forgotten God, and it's talking about the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is. He said this, Christ said it better for us that the Spirit came, and I want to live like that's true. And I, I hope you and I would want to live like that's true, because this, I don't want to keep crawling when I have the ability to fly. I love that he said that. And I think there's so many of us, the missing ingredient in our life is tapping into the person and the Godhead of the Holy Spirit. And I think there's a few things that we got to do, we got to understand today, because I know today is like really deep. I'm so, I'm not, I'm sorry, because this is the, this is God's word. But what I want you to understand as we kind of wrap this up, that you and I, we need to recognize God. We got to receive Jesus, God's son, right? Recognize God the Father receive God the Son, and the last thing, release the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Therefore, I want you to know that no one is speak, who is speaking by the Spirit of God said, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
And I just believe that the Holy Spirit, what He does in moments like this and in times like this is He is drawing you, leading you to truth, leading you to Jesus, leading you to a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Remember, God the the Son, His job, His function, His title was to be Savior of you and I. And then once you're saved, guess what? The Holy Spirit wants to be active in your life every single day from this moment until eternity when we get to spend eternity with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But we've got to recognize God the Father. We've got to receive Jesus, God's Son. And we've got to release the Holy Spirit. And I just believe that the Holy Spirit is drawing people to Him today. So if you're in this room, you're watching online, would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You're in this room, and I think there's so many of us that, again, this was a deep message, but I think for us it's just a good message to walk through together because we need to understand who the Holy Spirit is and the reason why we need that, the reason why we need to walk in accordance to what the Spirit of God shares with us and and deals with us and says yes or no or this or that or use this gift or that gift. And the reason why that happens is because He wants you and I to make a difference for Him before eternity happens. But there's people walking around every day that don't have a relationship with Jesus. And what's the Holy Spirit doing? He's drawing people unto Him. He's drawing people unto salvation. That that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. And I believe today that there's some people that need to make that decision to say yes to a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that if you and I will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we would believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, that we will be saved. And that's what you and I have an opportunity to say yes to today. And and the Bible does say, if you would confess your sins, say, Lord, this is where I've messed up, Jesus. This is where I've fallen short. I've I've sinned. I've sinned against you. But I believe in you. I trust in what you did on the cross. I trust in what you did uh, uh, by dying and being buried and getting out of the grave. And I want to live for you from this day forward. If you want to say something like that, say it word for word. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Let me live for you every day from this moment forward. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, help me be more like Jesus. Help lead me in all truth. Help me let people know that I I know Jesus and I want everybody to know uh, the Jesus that I know. Maybe you're in here and you prayed that or prayed something like that or maybe you're watching online. I just want to encourage you, if you did that, here's my heart for you, is that you would take a step of faith right now in this room or even online, if you said yes to, to asking for forgiveness for your sins, would you do something for me? we got some team that's on the wall right now that would love to know your name, love to get to know you. If you just said yes to a relationship with Jesus, would you just stand to your feet and would you move that direction? Our team is going to be moving as well, so you're not going to be the only person that's moving. So I love that. You guys make your way that way. Come on, church. Can we at least encourage them if they're moving because of salvation? Can we put our hands together and encourage them as they're moving along, as they're moving to have conversation, as they're doing that together? I love that. I love that. I love that. Hey, you're in this room, and you can look up here at me right now. I want to just challenge us, man. I'm excited about this today. I know it was a little different for me when it comes to presenting the message to you, but I want you to know that I think it's so important that our church knows who the Holy Spirit is, and the Holy Spirit is God. Come on, do you receive that today? If you do, won't you jump up on your feet? Put your hands together for King Jesus and A.B. Come on out here, homegirl. Come on, let's give it up for King Jesus in this place. Yeah, that's awesome. While you're jumping through your feet right now, our usher team is actually making their way up to their front, and they're going to be passing the offering containers through the rows. We've not done this, we did this last week. We've not done it in a while, and so just if, take it, pass it to the person next to you. And listen, if this is your first time here, we're not asking you uh, to put anything in, except if you want to drop your Connect card in there, you can do that. But this is just for those who call Purpose Church home, um, and it just t- tied in giving back to, to what God's doing here at Purpose Church, to His, to his kingdom, and to the work that He's doing. Um, and actually, I have a really cool story to share with you real quick, if, if you don't mind. Can I, can I share a cool story with you real quick? So we just finished our Help I'm Blank series last week. And two weeks ago, uh, Pastor Dustin talked about Help I'm Broke. And we actually got a really cool message this week uh, that says, After the Help I'm Broke sermon, uh, my family prayed hard and we felt it was time to start tithing at Purpose Church. Our first regular payment will co- was supposed to come out tomorrow. Today, we were pressured with some financial stresses and were tempted to cancel our tithe payment. 
Then I grabbed my wife's hand and we prayed together and jointly committed to trust God and to continue to tithe. Two hours later, God completely removed a $2,800 expense out of the blue, saving us $280 a month, the exact amount that was gonna be our monthly tithe. And he says, go God, let's give it up. And that's, that's just so exciting. That's just, um, you know, we talked about two weeks ago and we talk about every week when we talk about tithing. Trust God with, with 10% and you, you take your 90% and he will do more with that 90% than you could do with your 100%. And it's so cool just to see that in action. And I challenge you, Pastor Justin challenges, do the three-month tithe challenge. It's the second week of May. It's, it's not too late to tithe. Start tithing now. And if in three months your life's not different and, and God isn't blessing you beyond what you can imagine and beyond um, what, what we deserve, then we'll give you back your tithe for your three months. So we encourage you to do that. Just be faithful. And, and tithing is one way financially you can take your next step here at Purpose Church. But another way you can take a next step is by joining the church or joining the team. And that can actually happen next Sunday during next, which is at 1030. So right after this service, 1030 service, we'd love um, to have you. You can learn more about Purpose Church, who it is, who we are why we're doing this thing, kind of about our values, um, and, and just find out more about the church or join the, join the serve team, which we love our serve team so much here. At this place is a middle school gym, and like this is a middle school, but we get to have church here, and it's our serve team that makes that happen. So serve team, we love you so much. We're grateful for you. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to be on our way. It's raining out there, I'll just tell you that. But Hopefully you drove your boat to church today and you'll be good to go. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for our Purpose fam in this room. God, thank you that um, for Pastor Dustin's message is reminding us about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and God, that you, he is active and living and right here with us and accessible to us. Um, and, and we're going to find out so much more about the Holy Spirit in the weeks to come, God. But th thank you for this. Um, th thank you that the Holy Spirit is accessible to us and he's here with us. And we can call on him whenever and be helped and comforted through all that we face, God. So thank you for that, God. Be with my purpose family this morning as they head about their week. God, I pray that you bless them, that you keep them, that you make your face shine upon them, that this week, no matter what comes their way, God, that you will give them peace. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Mamas, happy Mama's Day. We love you so much. Grab you a macaroon or some tea on your way out, and we will see you next Sunday.